Peter, are you going to introduce Helen? Uh, right, so uh, very simply, there, uh, there are uh, two things you need to know. You need to know the hashtag, which is solo13hack, which is on your program, and you need to know the pirate pad, uh, which is probably announced in the hashtag, right? If you can work that out, <laughs> then you're doing fine. And we will, I will be streaming the pirate pad, I hope, uh, after Helen and Martin have finished. So we're going to be very strict on time because we're late. Uh, so Helen's got exactly 300 seconds. Uh, and, uh, so I'm going to introduce... No uh, I, last weekend, I went to NHS Hack. It was a fantastic event. Uh, and um, it, anybody who wants to know how to do it uh, should take a lesson from what Helen and Co have done. Off you go. Thank you very much. That's really kind, Peter. Um, hi, yeah, I'm Helen. I was involved in running NHS Hack Day last weekend. Um, there are regular sort of Hack Day events that have run for a couple of years, but I've only just got on board with the organisation. Can I just check, does everybody in here know what a Hack Day is, or is that...? No. No? No, I don't. Fine. Okay, so I'm going to give you a 300-second whirlwind tour of what we do and what the point is. So a Hack Day is something that's used um, in industry, in the sector, all, in all kinds of fields, to um, sort of get people collaborating, working, generating ideas. So the idea is those people get together in the same room for some amount of time and build software or tools or websites or apps or just, just whatever it is. And there are lots of themed ones that exist. Ours is, I think, unique for not being that themed beyond something to do with healthcare tech. Um, we let it just go, but let people do whatever they want. Um, we're not branded by sponsorship, everything like that. So we are interested in anybody who is interested in healthcare tech, making it better. We say making NHS IT better <laughs> to come along. So that's doctors, coders, um, physios, um, dentists. We've had patients. We've got people who just come along. There's a guy that came by accident last weekend and we got him to stay. So <laughs> seriously, he thought it was a day of lectures. <laughs> so what we do is people come along with ideas, and this has all gone horrible, and they pitch it quickly, 60 seconds, very strict, to the audience to say what the idea is that they want to build or what a solution for, and everybody listens, then we all have coffee together, mingle, you sort of get into little teams, work out who can work with who, get going. Um, our events are actually weekends, in spite of being called Hack Days, so there's two days of work, and then at the end, um, there's a straight three minute, three and a half minute presentation of what the teams have done. We have a panel of completely awesome judges who um, then deliberate and uh, give some feedback and uh, award some prizes, whatever it is that we have. So what makes our events good, I think? Well, obviously, they're free to attend. Um, they're not for profit, so there's all the whole kind of feel-good feeling. And we do that with non-invasive sponsorship. So we literally turn down sponsorship who wants to give us um, cups and pens and put posts everywhere. It's just, it's just not allowed, which I think really helps. Um, these are the only rules that we have. It's be as good as you can. Don't be mean to other people. You know, there's a sort of under, undercurrent of open source in there, but um, we don't make you have to do it. So I think... The reasons that our hack days work quite well is we do let people do whatever they want, um, but we do try and keep a timetable. So we say what people are expected to do at what times, and then let them get on with it. So there's no kind of, I don't think there's a lot of confusion about that. I think as a platform, we're really credible. We have great judges. We have really high-profile sponsors. So we're very lucky to have been able to rely on word of mouth just because it is so credible. There's a really good kind of reason behind it. And they're very productive. People work really hard. We have great attendees. Some amazing things are made in two days. If I have time, give you some examples. Um, there's a great history to the event. So with, this is our fifth one. The sixth one's happening in January. And um, there's continuation of products between events. Sometimes they're picked up again. Um, also, there, some of these are real products, not just prototypes, that are actually used in hospitals or GP practices or just whatever, like on a daily basis, which is really exciting. And lastly, communication. So we're all over Twitter on this conference. And um, we do that too. And it's a great way of keeping people kind of involved with what we're doing. In terms of how we manage to do all this, um, honestly, you cannot ever underestimate the amount of prior organisation that you need to do. And also, you can't underestimate how many extra multi-plug extension things you need to bring to a hack team. There will always be problems with um, Wi-Fi. And you'll tell the event that you the um, venue that you want 100 people to have Wi-Fi access unlimited for two days, and they'll go, yeah, 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 and then it'll keel over within 10 minutes. So you need to make sure you've got really good networking. We actually had a friend of mine who runs a um, sort of IFP coming along with a big bag of hardware and just making it better last time, which was a lot better. Loads and loads and loads of pat-tested extension cables and lots of coffee. Um, we also, being NHS-ish, uh, have a free healthy lunch so we get someone else to pay for. Um, one of our founders was very, very keen on the healthy side of that. 
Um, so yeah, that's approximately how we do it. Um, overall, what we get is a really good sense of community. I hope you can get the idea for how excited I am about it. It's a really good bunch, bunch of people. People tend to come back and back and back to the events. Some people have come to all five so far, not just because the project are handed over. I mean, once you come once, you see how good and friendly and great everything is, and just come back and back. Um, I've just, have I got a minute to... You've got one minute. Thank you. <laughs> uh, this is what haematologists use in hospitals when they count blood cells on uh, slides. There's a glass film, blood smear, and they literally put down a microscope, and then they press these levers for how many different cells they see it to um, help diagnose blood diseases, so your lymphomas, leukemias. It's, these cost 200 pounds, that's ridiculous, and they're very loud, cumbersome, and there aren't enough levers. We built this, I'm actually involved with this. It's just a web app, keyboard, counting tool. It's also gonna have, we're building it at the moment, version two is a massive, comprehensive, indexed image library of um, digitized slides that we've got from our hematologists on board. Um, so I think that's good, obviously, I'm in. <laughs> CCGC. Um, this is publicly available data from clinical commissioning groups. Um, it's just a tool for visualising it, which I think is much more important than just publishing it in a report, isn't it? You have to be able to interact and understand. So this is um, showing a heat map of whatever it is that you select. So for example, prescription rates for um, uh, generic versus branded drugs, uh, for smoking rates, mortality, all kinds of things. Um, I know I have absolutely no time. I want to show you this one, because this is abs absolutely happening. This is all doctors have to fill in a portfolio as they go through the training programmes and submit it at various job interviews. This is freeing up the data, so getting it out of that system, which is impossible to use and not possible on mobile access, and you can't um, get all the data out to use on your own CV. You have to type it all again, which is ridiculous. And this was on Kickstarter, and it's happening. And yeah, so in summary, I think we brand ourselves as having, having a culture, being unique in the sector, and when we say be a part of it, come back, continue to be a part of it. The next one's in Cardiff. I'm doing one in London next summer. Um, that's all your stuff. <laughs> Thank you. Fantastic. Well, it's cruel to give you only 300 seconds. <laughs> so let me say that there were three brilliant, there were 16 brilliant projects, and the three top ones. One, one of them used Gapminder uh, to look at practices. I think that one. Second one did uh, lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender uh, in pract in GPs, and the third one was about communicating within the wards on the hospital. Yeah. They were, and they're going forward. So, you know, it's not just two days of fun, it's building for the future. Because we're not pretending that these things are products, and we're kind of allergic to the word product. They're sort of prototypes, proof of concept, see if it works, and then you can move on if you want. So I think that was Okay, hack. I'm going to be brutal, and yeah. hack days are often very brutal to people presenting. Yeah, you have six, 60 seconds. So, uh, Martin, can you tell us, if, uh, I won't even introduce you, because everybody knows you, off you go. <laughs> Can I introduce myself just briefly yes, exactly. because I, I'm a medical hematologist by training. I did this cell counting until middle of last year when I became a software developer working for Publisher Plus now. Um, you, you asked this briefly, but in the audience, who has attended a hack day at least once? Okay, so, well, and who has attended three or more? Okay, so just. What I thought I would do, and I, because we have a very pushy uh, organizer, I wrote everything <laughs> I say down <laughs> in a blog post. Uh, I posted earlier this week, so I can read it all up. But basically, I wanted to just give some thoughts on, on what I think after attending a few hack days, what I like, what I don't like in the hack days I attended, and, and maybe some ideas. And this is very much a parallel what we just heard. Um, <laughs> what I really like about hack day is that they are about doing stuff. So you're not just listening and talking, but you actually do something, and that is something that makes you really feel good. That at the end of your day, you think you have produced something. It's all about teamwork. So it's not somebody standing there in front talking, and you listen or have a little discussion, but you really work in teams together. That's a really great experience. And you meet all kinds of interesting people, um, interesting projects, and you just go to hack day, and all kinds of things can happen because. The format that most people use is you sit there, you pitch project, and then you don't really know what you will end up doing when you walk there in the morning. What I do don't like is, first of all, it's really software developer, and it's probably not something where you're sort of beginning software developer, because it's really fast, and you have to jump right in, and that's a challenge, and that makes it a little bit exclusive. Um, so it's good for a community of sort of 
semi-experienced or experienced developers, but maybe if you're just interested in doing something that's hard and everybody's trying to, to include people and you work in teams, but that's still a challenge. Um, as we just heard, it can be a challenge to just set things up, all the technical stuff from Wi-Fi to where you put your software code and so forth, and then you maybe you lose two hours of the day just downloading and installing stuff. Um, sometimes you work on projects that are not really the best fit for something to do in a day or two. Maybe you work on something that's so much bigger that this is maybe something that needs a few weeks and the hack day isn't the best place. And I think the biggest problem of hack days is that it's all exciting, everybody goes home and then 99% of projects just die. And they sit there and they're sort of in a state where you could pick them up and do something, but most of the time you don't. And we heard that NSH hack day, one way of circumventing this, of course, is building, following up, and so forth. So I have three ideas to make hack days even more exciting. And the first part is basically what I just said. There has to be before and after. Not a single event, everybody gets excited and forgets about it, but it's really that you follow up, maybe a follow up event that you meet before, maybe that you think about what you want to do before, which is a slightly different format, but more importantly that you do something afterwards. So that maybe there, yeah, there's 20 projects, two are really exciting, and then you continue working on them. And the last, uh, the second one is, um, is the format. So for example, hack days are really about being there physically, but that can be challenging. So I haven't really been in a hack day where there's remote participation. You can also think about the length. So maybe one or two days on the weekend is exciting, but maybe sometimes four, five days is better. And I think most importantly, I really would be interested in seeing this format beyond software. Um, we tried something a few weeks ago, which we call a data challenge, which at the end of the day was also about software, but it was really more focused on doing something with data sets we had available. But something I really like for this format and what, what we actually have as a workshop tomorrow is Wikipedia editing. And something I would really like to take part in but haven't is a book sprint. So it's the same idea, you come together, you work on something, book sprints are a little bit longer, but you get something done, but you, you need skills, but it's different kind of skills. It's interesting for different kind of people. And I think this format is really exciting if you think beyond software. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Martin. Um, okay, uh, what I was hoping to do is to show our uh, etherpad here, uh, um, and we'll see if I can get connected. Uh, but uh, most hacks have got an infrastructure to them, and the infrastructure consists of blog posts, uh, wikis, Google Docs, etherpads, uh, Twitter stream, things of that sort. So it isn't just human to human. Uh, there's a lot of that. But um, forget me. Um, and um, uh, can we have reaction from the audience uh, now? Yeah. <laughs> 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 um, I like to see a bit more hardware kind of hacking. Really. I, I think Science. it depends on the hack day you turn up to because. Yeah. In Dublin, we run. Um, so, have you heard of Science Hack Day as an international yeah, yeah. setup? Um, yeah. There's a lot more hardware happening. So, in the Dublin version of that, about a third of our projects end up being hardware. And as a person who tends to craft when she turns up to her local hacker space, I usually end up with Science Hack Day crafting science yeah. things. So, we've yeah. done things like crochet blood cells and oh, cool. like make sewn bodies that are Velcro. And people turn up and then they feel they're much, they can get involved in a project where they're like, I can't program and I can't solder. But I can use a sewing machine, and yeah. they get very excited. <laughs> and we do get a lot of people who turn up to the science hack day and have a look and kind of go, okay. yeah. mm. Mm. And then they can engage with the project that they feel more comfortable with, just because yeah. we have such a bizarre mix of skill you. sets that come out to science hack day. It's good crack. Are you at talk? I am. Yeah, yeah. Talk is great. Come to Dublin and come to Craft Night, by the way. Craft Night. We need this. Um, yeah, as well, we had a project last weekend. Um, it's not a hardware hack like cracking out the sewing machine, but we had um, a medical physicist um, sort of working on how to do 3D printing to make moulds of individual patients' heads so they can do better targeting of, for example, laser therapy. Um, so a bit more. I mean, it's still that was in the software stages, but there will eventually be. Um, also, I'm currently working on um, something called Open Spirometer. It's on GitHub. Please help. Um, where we're hacking the microphone from a laptop to be a spirometer for patients. Um, yeah, more, um, accurate. So there was, um, I mean, this is 
So there was an episode of, I think it was the gadget show where they did a thing on hacking, and a lot of the stuff they did on that was hardware hacking. So they yeah. hacked a like five quid webcam into a microscope. Yeah, this is really kind of a cool one. And then they had a demonstration of someone who's actually like they were doing actual like science, and they had an actual lab, um, but they didn't have the funding for the crazy thing they wanted to do. So they built it with a, um, I think it was an Xbox motion detector, and yeah. sort of all the stuff that went in with that. Mm -hmm. So. It does happen. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's not necessarily always as high profile. So very quickly, uh, this is the, um, uh, how many people have used an etherpad or pirate pad? Right. So if you haven't, go to this here, piratepad.net, solo 13 hack, and you'll be welcome here. And that's me, that's Ross, uh, and these are all anonymous ghouls. <laughs> um, uh, and you can contribute, lots of people can do it at one time. So if you've got things you want to say, put your questions here and uh, off we go. That's mainly for the people outside, but um, we'll see how For we us go. too as well. I mean, it's very, it's very good to share links yes. and things. Um, so we've got the link to the NHS Hack Day, we've got links to things that have been created at various Hack Days. It's a really good thing. If you haven't seen Etherpad before, do have a look at it. It's amazing, really good collaborative real-time platform online really fantastic tool so um, I got a question um, on the Twitter stream from Lyndon Smith is she here oh yeah um, I thought it was a really good question um, oh okay I, I, I thought I thought I'd just pull this one out I think it's a really good question so you're really interested in perhaps maybe holding a hack day just how to do it where to start I would say something I like about Hack Day, I didn't say it earlier, is they are slow. That's why I like you have so much time in that you first start out, everybody talks, and you, you make decisions on what I want to work on during the day. And then doing the project is just hours and hours on working on the problem. So there is, there is a slow pace. And if there's different speeds in skills or explaining to each other, that really works well because you have, you, you have a lot of time. But you still need to get them into the room in the first place. So I think I'm coming from a completely you know, non-starting point here and to, bring that, to have this concept into a different industry, for example, or a different, you know, that, that sort of psychological culture shift. I absolutely understand what you mean. Absolutely understand. Um, we've addressed this by um, having sort of careful sponsors. So we don't tell people to come and it's not for profit. Um, so we need sponsors to pay for everything, basically. But if you pick the right ones, they'll be excited about supporting it rather than you know, begrudgingly handing money and they will advertise, which helps. Um, <coughs> on the website, as Peter's mentioning, it's collaborative, so there's a wiki, so people will, people can sort of feel like they're joined in before they have to actually turn up. And then, um, because we've had good judges, if you get some judges to agree to come to your first event or whoever you want to sort of present or top and tail it, um, they will help you advertise it too. And you only get a small one for the first time and then everybody brings a friend. And um, if you hold a good hack day, that is how it will work. <laughs> I'd like to respond to that as well. In terms of motivation for actually getting scientists to hack days, um, myself and many other researchers are extremely frustrated about certain things in academic publishing at the moment. You know, the tools are rubbish, authoring tools are rubbish. We want to change these things. We have strong motivation to actually change these things. We're excited about getting in a room with perhaps people who are better at um, coding and software development than we are. We can come in and talk to these guys, tell them what we want, and work with them to create something better. And that's the big motivation for me to attend Hack Days, because I'm not a brilliant coder. I can write a few lines, but I'm not actually you know, an agile hacker or whatever. Um, but you can actually sit down in a room with some really good software devs and actually try and guide them towards what you want and at the end of the day come out with something that actually looks quite cool. And so I think there is actually a lot of strong incentive for scientists to come along as long as you know, they hear about a hack day, they might be interested in it if they're frustrated with the current system. Um, and you know they have ideas about how to change things. Um, I, I think that's a strong motivation to actually go to a hack day. Also, they're really fun. 
Really, really yeah, they are a lot of fun. And it's a good idea to find an organization which has already done this. So um, Iron Brosser and the Open Knowledge Foundation, and just yesterday, um, we agreed with SciPy, Scientific Python, who are meeting in Cambridge next year, uh, that we would run a pre-session hack day on hacking data. So people can turn up without any worry about um, uh, being, um, you know, uh, having to do it all themselves. So you will find people who can help you. And we have fun. We have pizzas. We're going to have a punt con on the river. You know, um, the sun will shine. Uh, something I would like to add is we sort of said this, but most hack days have themes. I mean, some of them is just very broad, like NHS hack day probably, but mostly it's about we work to want to work on something specific, and that's what attracts people, that this is about, I don't know, something that people can relate to even though they are not coders, maybe. Yeah. Um, you mentioned 99% of the ideas don't go anywhere. Is that because it's impossible to actually turn that into something useful, practically? Or is there just some structural problem, specifically with the NHS, that really stops this developing into something that can be used? Well, I made the number up. But it's definitely, <laughs> definitely, let's say, and over 90%. Really the ideas that so I think that any of them actually gone into general use. So I think there are two aspects. One is, the hack day is, is partly just having fun for a day or two, doing something interesting. So it, the intent is not to do something that is long lasting. But why That's not? part of it. No, because it's really about meeting people, thinking about problems, and then you do something else. Um, so that it's really, if it's really having fun and not, oh, I have to make this, because coding, like, last bit that it really works and doesn't break, that can be painful and take forever, so. Um, and I think the other aspect is that it's the way they organize, and that's something I said I don't like. There needs to be a follow-up, because they are good ideas, and some of them are worth pursuing, and then they get lost. But, yeah, I just, if they're not, there's a missing step. So I would say, um, as I said earlier, it's about these are often prototyping ideas rather than making finished products. Mm. And um, as explained, there are quite a lot of reasons for that. You mentioned in the NHS it's hard to get software actually in there because of the infrastructure that there already is. Um, so the only hope is that we have people involved who can make it happen. So there's a couple of um, one year from consult hematologists on cell counter, and they're using it in hospital. So you know we've, we've written it using web frameworks that you know, IE7, we can support IE7 and um, things like that. There's lots of uh, little scripts that run off USB sticks to just kind of get it in there. And it's not um, sort of against the rules, it's just, as you can imagine, there's quite a lot of kind of inertia, but that's specific to NHS. But I mean, overall, um, it's more about getting people used to the idea of working together and of talking and generating ideas and putting in a little burst of effort to get somewhere. It's not whether there's actually anything for that, it's kind of the engagement is the engagement if you like, um, getting people used to the idea of working together just because it's nice to do it, and better. Can I just quickly ask a question that follows on with that? You mentioned earlier about pitching your session for yeah. 60 seconds, and then, but then kind of, what are the next steps? So for someone completely new, thinking about setting this up, what's the structure for the whole thing? Do loads of people stand up at the beginning and go, right, these are sessions I'd love to do, who wants to do what, and some of them are dropped? Or Not do sessions. all of them happen? How does it work? So anyone can pitch an idea. And we have a um, collaborative spreadsheet, Google Doc, and just go down in order. If you pitch an idea, you may have a solution in mind, or you may need a solution. And then we have coffee. And everyone kind of, you go to find the person, or you get them on Twitter. Um, we have live tweeting, so you can try and link people up. You can always come and find an organizer and say, oh, I like that project, I'd like to talk to that guy. And then the ideas that have people wanting to work on them go forward. And they just pair off into various corners of the room. And others, I mean, some people, when their ideas are taken up, work on it on their own which has happened, some people drop it and work on something else. So I mean, the people that come with ideas to pitch don't necessarily want to get that done. It's more about kind of taking part. They're happy to work on something, you know? And how many pitch? So if it's- Last minute, weekend, we had 20, max has been 25. It, it depends how many people there are, though, because obviously if you've only got 50 people turn up, you can't really support, you know, 10 yeah. different pitches, whereas if you've got 100 people, NHS hack days, you know, are huge um, compared to some of the hack days I've been to, so. It's really dependent on the number of participants. We have all the pictures we do in two minutes long as well. It doesn't have to be so strict. There just has to be a limit. Sorry. No, I was going to say, uh, don't feel disappointed if only five people come. That is not a failure. 
Um, you'll just do things differently. Um, and you could still you you know, get an amazing prototype from those yeah. five people all working together. It's not about the, the quantity of people, it's about the quality of the results, you know. So. Uh, is there a sweet spot, though, in terms of having, having enough people to have core m and uh, That's an interesting and question, sort of actually, yeah. Over the really loud voices, but yeah. on the other side, you can easily have so many people that, that good ideas get lost in the wash. Well, the largest tech day I've been to was Wikipedia. So this was 100 people, this was crazy. So very productive in a way, but that's very, very different from, so they were all kinds of, so for example, demo sessions and learning and lots of stuff going on. That's very different from a small group of people that just ideas. Okay. And just to your question, I wanted to add that the format of hack days is, is in a way very similar to bar camps, which is more for talking about stuff, but unconference where you don't know what the program will be like in the beginning everybody pitches and you make decisions and form small groups so if you're familiar with that it's quite like that so can i ask uh, how many people here have uh, run a hack day can we hear from you can, can uh, i just leave in very quickly uh, yeah. we you know see where we Please, this is all good stuff. Have any of you got examples when it's been an abject failure? <laughs> and I ask this because <laughs> getting buy-in from, from your bosses, from your company, it's very difficult. We're going to do this happening, it's going to be great. What happened? Well, nothing happened. But can we do it again, though? Well, no. And, and if any of, has any of it happened to you that's just been, you've done nothing, nothing's come out of it, how have you G people up to, 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 to move on from there? Yes, I, I've been to one where we went down to Shoreditch, um, uh, on a Sunday, and I think it was me, Rufus Pollock, and somebody else. You know, I mean, that is too small for a hack day. Um, so, um, I don't think there was any financial investment. Um, but that's not common. But you're quite right. It, you know, don't set expectations too high at the beginning. And again, in terms of um, saying nothing coming out of it, I mean, in my view, people sitting in the same room talking for a day have something coming out of it, whether or not they actually build anything or change anything. So um, I know investors won't necessarily see it that way. So this is um, the difference with quite a lot of the more theme hacks. So there was um, a few months ago, there was Hack the Police. And they had a theme, they had ideas, and it was to get, it was to generate ideas in their sector. They wanted apps built like this, and they were going to be used by police. So there was basically running a hack day is a cheap way of getting that, and that's why they did it. And it was really, um, because this felt so pressured about the bottom line, um, it was very much, uh, okay, you can present your idea at the end if you've got stamps on your card from all five of our sponsors, and the sponsors are coming around, like chatting to the people, and then getting stamp on the card, and then you can present. And it's like, you, you can enter to win the prizes if you've networked hard enough. And it's just a bit, I think, unfortunately, there is a bottom line, and I know that someone has to pay for these things, but if you're obsessed with that, it kind of takes away from the whole motivation for doing it in the first place, if that makes sense. So. Sorry, I don't have an answer. So there's a lot of organisations outside academia. So I went to one in Melbourne, run by the Melbourne Age, which is the you know liberal paper there, uh, and they had three hacks on data journalism, uh, MPs' expenses. You know they had all the data on that. Um, bushfires. You know what do you do? You know what what are all the data associated with bushfire? And then they unearthed some uh, uh, you know. Um, proprietary stories from the age, uh, from the background and so on. So, you know, go, your local uh, paper, your local um, government might very well be interested in hacks. Yeah, and, and that's one of the most exciting things for me, actually, is bringing together academia and people outside academia. So I've been looking at the data journalism community um, quite a lot lately because they've got some absolutely fantastic tools that academics should actually use. So Tabula is one that's yeah. really good at extracting tables from PDFs. And there's so many academics that could actually use that kind of kind of tool. And so we need to get more collaboration. That's that's one of the brilliant things I think about Hack Days. Even if there's no concrete app or data set actually being delivered from at the end of the day, the networking to get academics to meet A academics from other universities, B, you know, publishing tech people, C, you know, librarians or data journalists, actually get them outside of their ivory tower sphere is a really, really good thing. It really, you know, broadens your horizons. I mean, I'm speaking as a researcher, so I know some of my colleagues, you know, are just, just straight down the line, only ever meet researchers. So I think it's really, really important from that point of view. So, so, uh, so we run a hack day called the Collaborations Workshop. We've run it since 2009. I think we've done about eight along this model since that time. I think um, it's a really nerve-wracking thing to organize, especially when you're just starting one off. 
because it completely relies on the people who, who turn up on the day. But the thing is that the people who turn up are attracted by that kind of event, so that they're the right kind of people to come. Um, I think once you get, when you're starting one off, you've got to get your strong on your contacts, just get a small group of people to come to that first one, and then from then on in, it lives on sort of word of mouth. And um, I think most people who come along enjoy them, so they tell their friends, and we find that with our workshops, the same people keep coming back, but they come back with, with their friends the next time, or they send somebody from their group for the next year. I think, yeah, it's, it's a nightmare to organize, but it's a really enjoyable event, and it's also very good if, um, if you have a broad question that you couldn't sort of answer in a conference style where you'd have lots of presentations, and you just want to sort of uh, get concepts and ideas from your community, it's, it's the perfect kind of event. We have someone over here. Um, yeah, what we found was most people understood what the hack day was going to be about in that they figured that there'd be small projects and they'd get involved and some people would pitch projects and people used to shift. Um, we found very few people didn't enjoy it. I got one guy one morning after 30 minutes he comes up to me on the registration desk and freaks out the fact that we're just drinking coffee and talking to each other and that we haven't started hacking and you know I've come all the way from the <coughs> other side of the suburb, it wasn't even from a different city. Um, but for the most part people are quite receptive and we've had some amazing collaborations come out of it. So we've had people go in, they start on a project, the project <coughs> bombs, there is nothing to come out of it. We have a pile of dead soldered LEDs and nothing. But actually a few months later you've got art, art projects coming out of it. You've got people who are working on software together. You've got people who've, like we had from one, we ended up with a small startup company came out of it. But we were like, we can't keep pushing this in the media when we were trying to advertise the following year because we're like, this is fantastic. We have a small startup company that came from a collaboration during the hack day. But if everyone comes to the hack day expecting to have a startup company, mm. oh my God, it's going to be an absolute, we're going to be mortified and no one's going to come out the second one with the... With the um, so it's kind of, there's a little bit about managing people's expectations. You expect to come to a hack day and do something fun, do something interesting, meet some people. And if you do two of these three things, you're probably actually achieving a lot of what I would expect to find from a hack day. Um, like, there's some great collaborations that have come out of it. As for finished projects, it can be a mixed bag. Sometimes you get stuff that's put together and then that's it. The people involved are kind of, we've done 36 hours of it. We drank too much coffee and it was a great idea at the time. We never want to see this again. And if you please, don't ever mention the trees around Fingal. We've mapped them once, we're not mapping them again and, and walk away from it. But um, yeah, I think the main thing is just to manage people's expectations of what you will have on the day. Um, and most people will come along pretty receptive and people will turn up for an hour or two to have a look and they'll come around and talk and you'll explain your project. <laughs> and um, stuffed toys are quite popular at them, so yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, is the name a bit of a PR issue? Because uh, for people who don't do programming, hacking is something that bad people do to yeah. 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 data. There's a subset of people who will be aware of the sort of hardcore hacking of, of turning digital cameras into microscopes and so on. For everybody else, this is not about a way to get clever people into a room and talk about ways to solve problems. Well, I can answer. We did a hack day a few weeks ago in CERN, and that was not allowed, so it was a code sprint. And that's sort of where a few other hackathon code sprint, I think, were one of the more common ones that are used instead. But I think it's partly the appeal that it hack sort of sort of it's 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 not mainstream and it, that's the what the word I Edgy. think also um, expresses. Hello. Uh, so I have one question here on the tweet stream. Is there a list of hack days or websites? Now I know that I get uh, something from uh, events in London, which uh, you know there's at least one hack every week in London. <coughs> but does anybody know of? you know, sites that advertise hack dates. It's a good idea. Well, Sciencehackdays.org or something? Yeah, but yeah. Google it. Yeah, there's it's very selective, very though. Science. Very, very selective. So there's maybe one a month or something. Yeah, we have a hack day in America. Yeah. Hack day days. <laughs> Quick, register it. <laughs> so we should have a meta hack day to set up that, right? Yeah, because <laughs> there's this NASA do a space hack day. Yeah. Um, there was, we had one in the hackerspace recently with a visitor um, on disaster recovery hack days and it was getting a mix of physical hacks, how can you build a better shelter and software hacks, yeah. how can you find people and keep tracking them. I, mean, I found the hack day manifesto which is sort of just 
what they recommend we should have. I've put it on the, the list. Fantastic. And so, you know, sort of saying, like, expect that every person will have four devices that needs to get to the, the wireless. <laughs> <laughs> and if it's in Apple, probably it's 10. <laughs> if I can respond to the question about the uh, PR possible issue mm. and the, the branding of it as a hack dig. So I've been thinking about this really carefully over the last month, and I've had a couple of conversations on Twitter, which you can dig back. I hope I haven't um, overstepped my boundaries. Um, I think, yeah, it's, it's really important that people understand what hack day means. And um, I've spoken at a few conferences this year where the first thing you say is, hi, we're from NHS hack day. We don't want to hack into NHS data systems <laughs> and steal your information. And like that, there's always a bit of a nervous laugh because people aren't sure like if we really were going to do that or and you know it's it's there's definitely an issue there and um, also um, on the engagement front trying to get patients to come along or people with no coding skills just talking about this on Twitter right now it's really important that people come because um, it's not just tools aimed at doctors and coders it's websites for information it's tools for patients there's quite a lot of you know interpatient interacting in hospital where's my nurse dot org whatever it is um, so we need people to actually be able to use um, and people to design the things. So there have been plenty of patients coming along, pro arguably not enough, but I'm happy personally with keeping it called a hack day because for our own model, we need coders to come. So at the end of the day, you can have a hack day without any patients or doctors and with coders, it's just not very NHSE, but you can't have one at all if nobody can write a line at the software hack. So in terms of calling it a hack day, I think as long as you say what type of hack it is, you're absolutely right, it's a PR issue. So is there anyone here who would like to run a hack and has got a, a theme or a subject area and would like to discuss how they might go about it? Yeah? Yeah, probably. It sounds like a good idea and that is our philosophy. We do have, uh, we are developing a platform which is, uh, we had the chance to discuss about it at the next panel at the review session. So we're using open software and we are, well, we are we would like to get in touch with all programmers. We would like to share the same philosophy and have the same enthusiasm. And it sounds a nice idea how to approach this people and how to create a community. How so what, what does your platform do? It's a, it's a platform for OpenBV, but it's like an overlay service to already publish, like pre-print the articles. For example, we have archive, we're talking about archive. Why not uh, uh, authors themselves, why, cannot, uh, why can't they not initiate a peer review? Like invite personally reviewers to evaluate their papers, probably evaluate their papers, papers. So it's a platform that enables this kind of process in short. Silence. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe something that you said earlier, what, what is not a good idea for Hack Day is we have this cool platform and come and build stuff around it. So, because that's good for my business and maybe we have prices. So that's a very mm, tricky it's line. Not, what if it's not a business because it's not a business? Well, it's a business in the sense that you want people to do something for you for free on the weekend. So if you, if you frame it too much like this, that's not really exciting. You want people to do what they want mm. uh, around the theme, but it, that would be my recommendation. We had one once where we, one of our judges was the chief um, medical officer at NHS was Gary Lewis, and he's now a data officer. And he came along with um, that previous year's report and said, I published this, it's 40 pages long, it took me the entire year to write it. Nobody has ever read it. Um, <laughs> can you all please um, do, yeah. or can you do something that opens up this data that shows what's in here, there's just, just anything you like about that. And he put some money behind that um, and offered it as a prize. So for the best hack, using something from that report, if that makes sense. Yeah. We're happy to rephrase it anyway. We don't, we, yeah, we wouldn't want, want people to work free for free. Yeah, do something yeah. For us. No, we could be like uh, any anything else. We can be like, uh, why don't we do something else? Or why don't we be? It's not. It's not about people helping us. We don't see it like us. We just can bring the idea and bring. The idea is developing. We have. We're at the development stage. It's not. It has started, but we can start something new. We can develop something on top. It's not. It's not about. Something that's the difference between our, in this room, sort of nice hack days and um, sort of meaner, sort of commercially run hack yeah, days, isn't so it? Just so it's important to say like this is a problem in academia, it's a big problem in academia. We already have something like a, a solution, but we can think of how improving it, how helping other tools that we haven't thought about, not within our own group, but we can participate in other groups. So we, there's no, no need to phrase it like this. Like, uh, Anyway. Yeah, yeah, the, the question is, can the group of academics get together and self-organize their solution themselves? You know, okay, we need we need the 
open peer review. Can we get together and share our skills and find a solution? Well, so, uh, you know, as, as, a, as an academic, or recently retired, I am. I actually uh, find it often uh, how strange in academia that there are so few hacks compared with outside in the world. Uh, they do happen, but um, uh, a lot of the driving force is outside. You know, so uh, if you have a social issue, you know, if you want to map your city, if you want to build an app uh, which links the buses together. If you want to, you know, tell the city where the potholes are. If you're worried about human rights somewhere, you know, typical hack actually is run by OpenStreetMap. Um, if you don't know that, go and look at it because it's wonderful. So that, it, that's the archetypal hack. You know, they uh, they have mapping the city parties where they go out on bikes and um, uh, and map the city. That's a hack. Uh, similarly, we've got somebody who's doing air pollution, you know, we're going to go out and, uh, so citizen science and hack overlaps an awful lot. So but maybe we can frame this as a question again of, I think hacks work most of the time and people have done them, I think, enjoyed themselves, but it, what is the stuff that maybe you want to do differently or what we can learn from it? For some of the things outside of science, and we have touched on a few of those. And for example, NH NSH hack, I'm very impressed that I think you have to have something that just happens regularly and then you can build continuity around that. Both in the sort of skills, I think organizing the fifth time is just much easier than the first time, I guess. Except different people have run every one. OK. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, we're already a brand, I suppose. Anyone who hasn't spoken? I've got a question. So you talk about hack days, about creating something from scratch, I mean, in general, usually, right? Um, any, any experience in using already existing uh, APIs and repurpose them to suit your own needs or solve your own issues in cooperation with, with the API or the source? Yeah, absolutely. Um, it's really encouraged. It's not necessarily about things happening from scratch. So um, we, the last hack day made I think, uh, using the Wemo, which is a kind of motion, wireless motion detecting you pop on the internet, and hack the API for that in order to make it pull an email account for emails not being sent to track when your grandma hasn't made a cup of tea for six hours and then email the family, if that makes sense. <laughs> so, yeah, and it's all, I mean, it's, it's a bit of fun, but that's, that's quite a good thing, I think. So um, it's all about bootstrapping what already exists to bring it forward. It's not about sitting at a blank terminal and being like, okay, I'm going to create something. So which I think is a lot less off-putting um, for people to come along and get involved with. Did anybody see Hans Rosling on the telly last night? Well, you should, because <laughs> you, you must see him. And he's produced this brilliant uh, software called Gapminder, which, uh, which is a multi-dimensional data viewer, and he uses it to show world population and so on. A group at NHS Hack took the software, it's all open source, and used it to show how general practices uh, were doing, what their features were, which ones were doing well, which ones were outliers. So yeah, you definitely want projects to continue um, and to build on existing things, that's the core. Cool. I find um, academics really like playing with interesting data sets, so if you do give them like an API key or something and he say Here, here's a million triples or something, you, 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 may, you may get them doing something interesting. So if you, if you come to the event offering something kind of unique like that, maybe not, not everyone has access to, or you launch it at the hack day, I think that can be quite a good idea. At hack for ack we all got given um, 100 US dollar Amazon um, cloud cards, which is quite cool. So if you actually, you know, had something computationally difficult, you just start up. Uh, so if you give enough people incentive and kind of resources like that, it can be good. Our hardware guy last weekend was offering free um, VPSs for the weekend, mm. and then like reduced rate hosting to carry on for the next three days. Yeah, that was quite interesting. Yeah, anyone else who hasn't spoken? Anyone who wants to do a hack day after the session or go to one and didn't think about this before the session? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I, like after this, I definitely would be into. Like, I, 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 I know a lot of hackers. That's the thing. But I've never actually been to a hack day. Um, but You've now, been to a hacker space. Though. I have been to your hacker space. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but no, I, yeah. So I would go now. I think I'd, I'd be less intimidated. You know? Yeah.
So we're actually updating our website now. The yeah. first page is going to be, just come. If you're at all interested, just come. If you think you're not good enough, come. If you think you're an imposter, i.e. you would be an imposter if you came, come anyway. If you think any of these bad things, just come. And seriously, I, I've yeah. already said, but last weekend, um, a guy wandered in from the chemistry lab thinking it was day of lectures about um, sort of, yeah, academia hacking, basically. And um, I quickly explained what it actually was. He looked really bewildered, but I walked him around and introduced people, and he stayed. And it was a core part of actually what ended up being a winning team. So <laughs> it's all about getting people to just turn up. We want everybody to turn up. And if you don't come again, it's your choice. Yeah. Um, I asked a question on Twitter about involving non-expert public type oh, people yeah. who are just interested. Is there any sort of good ways of facilitating their input involvement in Date, or do you just sort of throw the and hackers and the way you go? Sort of so our approach is quite hands off, as I said, so they just cope. And <laughs> it, I guess it's sink or swim, but if they're there, they're more likely to swim, right? Like somebody already said. Um, in terms of getting them, do you mean in terms of getting them to come along or supporting them once they're there? Uh, both, yeah. Um, so we've. If you um, have patients involved, sort of, do you sort of try and. If you had a particular data set you're interested in, you might um, ask anybody if they knew someone who was quite who, who had that disease or knew about that disease or from a charity representing that disease or whatever. If they knew anybody good that might want to come along, and you can you can do it like that. It's just why it takes so long to get off the ground. So you can't plan it in a month, something like this. You need a long longer run up to get the right people, give them time to decide to come, and to have space in the diary. Like that. And yeah, there's any number of patients with most types of diseases, so it's easy for us. There are, there are no second-class citizens. Everybody's a citizen, and everybody's got something to bring. You know, they might have experience in law, they might have experience in uh, running small organisations, whatever. This is important. The human skills are as important as uh, the software skills. Uh, so Palo Alto in California, where Stanford is, they ran a hack the city uh, and they opened the whole city and they had, uh, you know, uh, street food and all sorts. Food is important at hacks. Uh, you know, hack hackers will come for pizza, you know. Um, <laughs> anybody, anybody will come for pizza? Yeah. After enough hacks, <laughs> you won't want more pizza. Yeah. Our Appalachians inside Attack Day are famous. <laughs> <laughs> they love them. <laughs> Seriously, and it doesn't all have to be hacking. You can have soft ties. Uh, you can have knitting. You can have people telling stories. You know, yeah. anything that engages. And to set the precedent for doing more of the engaging stuff, talking yeah. to people more, um, networking. If you're going to be like that about it, um, it's invaluable. Just getting people to spend time together. I mean, uh, uh, beyond the PDF, we had brilliant graphic artists. They covered the whole wall with a cartoon of what was going on. You yeah. know, anybody as well. I would say, if you want a brief taste of what a hack day is like, and there isn't one happening soon, there's probably a hacker space in the area who are effectively doing this all the time, constantly. Drop into your local hacker space and find out what sort of yeah. normal people are knocking around making things. Talk to any of the four of us if you didn't want to raise it in the public. I haven't been yet.